phonics practice today, we are reading Chap's Cap. And in today's class, we are practicing the ending sound app, 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 AP. Let's go! As always, I'll read first and you listen, and then you try to read on your own after. Are you ready? This is Chap. Chap likes his cap. You try. Good job. Chap's cap has a flap. You try. Go. Nice. The flap has a snap. Chap snaps the flap. You try. Go. Nice! Chap's cap has a strap. Chap ties the strap. You try, go! Nice work! Now Chap puts on his coat. Chap will zip. Chap will wrap. Do not leave a gap, chap. You try, go. Nice. Where should chap go? You try. Nice. Chap will use a map. You try. Good. Chap taps the map. I will go here, says Chap. Your turn. Good job. Chap goes to the park. Soon it is time to go home. Your turn. Good. And the final page. Chap takes off his cap with the flap. It is time to take a nap. Your turn. Good. In today's class, we practiced all the words with the ending sound app, app, app. AP. And now it's your turn to tell me if these six words have the same ending sounds and if they are rhyming words. Are you ready? The first word is lap. Does lap rhyme with cap? What do you think? Good. It does rhyme. Lap has ending sound app, just like cap. Good job. The second word is scrap. Does scrap rhyme with nap? What do you think? Good, it does rhyme. Scrap has ending sound app, just like nap. Good job. What about the third word? A bird. Does bird rhyme with chap? What do you think? Good, it doesn't rhyme because bird has ending sound erd. Very good. What about the fourth word, pancake? Does pancake rhyme with snap? What do you think? Good, it doesn't rhyme. Pancake has ending sound, ache. Very good. The fifth word is dig. Does dig rhyme with flap? What do you think? Good, it doesn't rhyme. Dig has ending sound, ig. Very good. And the final word is trap. A mouse trap. Does trap rhyme with strap? What do you think? Good. This one does rhyme. Trap has ending sound at, just like strap. Very good. And now it's your turn to tell me how many words you can think of with the same ending sound at, at, at. 
write it all down below. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are still with the Scooby Doo gang. And in today's book, we are reading Camp Fee. Let's go. It's summertime and Scooby and Shaggy are working as counselors at Camp Kichihaha. Like, it's so groovy that we get to go to camp while Fred, Daphne and Velma hunt for ghosts. The two buddies stumble on a construction site covered with glowing green gunk. Yuck! What's this goopy stuff? Ah! A green slime monster pops out from behind the trunks and starts chasing them. Shaggy's campers come to the rescue. Hey, Mr. Monster, pick on someone your own size. Ooh, the kids have a plan. They hose down the green goal and it runs away. Nice. Another group of campers appears just as the monster disappears. Guess what, Dennis? The glowing green monster attacked us. No way, did you see the toxic terror? Toxic terror? You guys know the old story, don't you? Years ago, workers building the camp discovered a toxic waste dump. They built a cabin right on top and gave it unlucky number 13. A new counsellor was staying in the cabin when the floor started glowing green. Slime slipped through the cracks in the floor and the toxic terror claimed its first victim. They say the toxic terror returns every year to haunt the counsellors who dare to sleep in cabin 13. Like, I'm glad we're in cabin 18, right Scoob? Rare. Woo! The camp director, Clyde, joins the group. What's going on here? You should all be in bed. Like, Mr. Camp Director, the toxic terror, no ghost stories at this camp. Whoever vandalized the construction site better not have set us behind schedule. Uh-oh, he's angry. The next morning, Shaggy tells the whole story to Gray, another camp counselor. Ooh. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't a monster. Maybe it's something to do with this new construction. Clyde wants to turn the camp into a resort that's only for adults. Hmm. But Shaggy can't stop worrying about the toxic terror. At bedtime, he nails all cabin 18's windows and doors shut. Like this. And then they fall asleep. But Shaggy is no match for the toxic terror. Yikes! Growl! Like everyone outside on the double! Whoa! There's just one problem. The doors and windows are all nailed shut. Don't panic kids. We cowards always have an escape plan. I wonder what the plan is. Shaggy and Scooby crash right through the wall. Growl, ah! Like, why does that thing keep coming after us? Alex runs to the cabin and rubs at the number on the door. I think I know. Uh-oh, it's number 13, not 18. Clyde's construction workers must have painted over it. Cabin 13? I'm Cabin 13's counselors? Growl! That's when the toxic monster returns. The chase is on. Shaggy and Scooby lead the kids to an old storage barn. Shaggy and Scooby and the kids jump in a golf cart. So does the toxic terror. Uh-oh. Oh no, something up ahead is blocking the path. Who is it? It's Scooby-Doo. He scares the toxic terror away. The next morning, the campers go for a swim in the lake. Poor Shaggy and Scooby, we've got to help them. If only we could find some clues. Alex, look out, a shark. That's no shark, it's Dennis. He's trying to scare everyone. That night, everyone heads into the woods for a camp out. Come on guys, we're almost at Terror Hill. Ooh, it's a bear. Suddenly a bear leaps out at them. It's just Dennis again. Once everyone else is asleep, Alex, Tim and Henry decide to look for clues. He use these high-tech glasses. They track the toxic fumes from the monster. Wow, cool. That's a nice idea. Like, where did the campers go? Shaggy and Scooby start looking for Alex, Henry and Tim. 
They don't find them, but they do find the toxic terror. Ah! Run, Scooby! Run! As Shaggy and Scooby flee, they run into their missing campers. Now the toxic terror is after everyone. The whole gang races towards a new tower that's under construction. Come on kids, let's hide up here. Whoa. Ah. But rot roll, the toxic monster decides to shake things up. The campers, Shaggy and Scooby end up in the lake. Clyde arrives just in time to see the tanning tower for his new business sink into the lake. You kids have ruined everything. I'm shutting down the summer camp. Uh-oh. No, camp is our favorite place in the whole world. No. The campers convince Shaggy and Scooby to investigate the toxic terror. They explore the creepy basement under cabin 13. Here's where the toxic dump should be. But there's nothing here. A toxic terror is a fake. Mm. Hey, woo. Someone better tell him that. The gang makes a run for it. They get outside and say, we made it. It's time to come up with a plan. Looks like we need to set a trap. A monster trap. Leave that to me and Scoob. Like, we got a lot of experience setting traps for creepy creatures. Hmm. The kids check out Scooby's trap. Are you sure it's going to work? Hmm. As long as Scooby and I are live bait, we can't miss. Rare. Rive rate. Shaggy and Scooby wander through the woods, hoping to run into the toxic terror. Uh-oh. In the meantime, the kids set their own trap for the toxic terror, and it works. Now it's time to see who the toxic terror really is. Dennis? But wait, is there another toxic terror? Oh no, there are two toxic terrors. There's only one thing to do. Shaggy and Scooby run away, leading the second terror to their trap. Uh-oh, it's climbing up the playground, and they make a swing for it. It works! Never doubt the power of a crazy trap. Finally, the toxic terror is revealed. Gray? I'm sorry Shaggy, I wasn't after you or Scooby. But why did you go through all of this, Gray? I wanted to scare Clyde away. I love this camp and I didn't want him to close it. Hmm, Clyde hasn't seen the toxic terror, has he? Shaggy, Scooby, Gray and the kids decide to play a little trick on the camp director. Growl. Ah! He runs through the door. He he he. Bye bye Clyde. The end. Wow, talk about one scary camp. And now it's your turn. What do you think about this story? And have you been to a camp before? Share with me down below. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready i'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun that's all for now i'll see you next time bye bye for social studies today we are going to scotland a very beautiful cold country where the big strong men wear skirts let's go Chapter 1. Welcome to Scotland. Listen to bagpipes. Wander through an ancient stone circle like this. Some of these stones are almost 20 feet or 6 meters high. Where are they? The Orkney Islands. Or take a trip to Skara Bay over here. This was once a very busy village. When? Around 5,000 years ago. Welcome to Scotland. Scotland is part of the United Kingdom. It is north of England. Kings and queens once lived in castles here, like in this one, which is called Edinburgh Castle. It stands on a hill called Castle Rock. Scotland has some amazing animals. Highland cows like these ones are very common in rural areas. Atlantic seals swim in the water. Dolphin and porpoises too. You could see whales, spot gulls, gannets, even fermars too. What are these? These are seagulls. They fly along the coast. What do you think? Natural reserves here keep endangered animals safe. Like what? There's the pine marten, the golden eagle, and the Scottish wildcat. Are there endangered animals where you live? Which ones are they? And how can we protect them? Let me know down below. Chapter 2. 
Life in Scotland. Children here go to school for at least 12 years. They may leave when they are 16 years old, but most continue school. They prepare for jobs or go to college. Many people work in tourism. Others build computers or other electronics. Farming is also very important here. What else? There's also fishing. The busiest cities are in the south. This area is called the Central Lowlands. Glasgow is the largest city and it is a port. And the highlands are up north. Many lakes are there. They call them lochs. Loch Ness is one of the biggest. Some say a sea monster lives in this lake called the Loch Ness Monster. Did you know that crops grow in the rural areas? Which crops? There's the oats, wheat, potatoes. The hills are good for raising livestock, like animals. The head of the government is the United Kingdom's Prime Minister. Scotland has representatives in the UK Parliament. It meets in London and they make laws. Scotland also has its own parliament which meets in Edinburgh and this is the capital of Scotland. The sovereign of the United Kingdom has a home here too. He or she approves the laws and attends special events. Chapter 3, our favourite, food and fun. Would you like to try a cockaleeky soup? It is full of leeks. These are vegetables similar to onions. Haggis is also very popular. It is made of sheep, oats and spices. Porridge is a filling breakfast or some enjoy scones. Shortbread too, yummy. The Highland Games takes place every year. People play the bagpipe, they dance, they take part in sports too. Many wear kilts at these games. You will see many tartans. Stripes of different colours cross each other. There are many patterns. Take a look. The Highland Games have different contests. Here are some of the sports. There's caber toss, hammer throw, shot put and tug of war. These are all strength based games. Soccer is a popular sport here. They call it football. People play rugby and cricket too. Many people also enjoy hiking in the hills, which is a lot of fun. There are many adventures waiting in Scotland. Would you like to visit one day? Let me know down below. And now let's go through some new words we learnt in today's book. The first word is ancient, which means very old. Capital is a city where the government leaders meet. Crops are plants grown for food. Endangered means in danger of becoming extinct, usually because of human activity. Livestock are animals that are kept or raised on a farm or ranch. Parliament is a group of people elected to make the laws. A port is a town with a harbour where ships can load and unload goods. Reserves are protected places where hunting is not allowed and where animals can live and breed safely. Rural is related to the country or country life. Sovereign means a king or queen. Tartans are patterns for cloth made of crossing stripes of various widths and colours. And finally, tourism is the business of serving people who are traveling for pleasure. And now it's your turn. What do you think about this amazing country called Scotland? Let me know down below and also share with me some interesting things you'd like to do if you visit one day. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye! For Animal World today, we are going back to the safari and today we are learning about the orangutans, one of the cheekiest, smartest animals in the world. Let's go! What are orangutans? Orangutans are considered as great apes. They have long arms and reddish hair like this. Orangutans live in rainforests and they are the largest mammals that live in the trees. They use their strong arms to swing from branch to branch. They grab them with their hands and feet too. Similar to birds, orangutans also sleep in trees and they also build nests out of branches. Look how happy this one looks. Sometimes they also travel on the ground. They move around on their hands and feet like cats and dogs. Orangutans forage for food during the day. They eat fruits, leaves and shoots like these. Sometimes orangutans even eat insects. They use sticks to pick termites out of termite mounds. A young orangutan like these ones will live with their mother for up to 8 years before it's old enough to look after themselves. The mother carries her baby from tree to tree. Hold on tight little one! Now let's go through some of the new words we learnt in today's book. 
The first word is forage, which is to go out in search for food. Great apes are smart mammals that can walk on two feet and grab with their hands. Orangutans, gorillas and chimpanzees are considered as great apes. Insects are small animals with six legs and hard outer bodies. Insect bodies are divided into three parts. Mammals are warm-blooded animals with a backbone that also feed their young milk, like you and I. Rainforests are warm, wet forests that get a lot of rain. Shoots are plants that are just beginning to grow. And finally, termites are insects that feed on wood. Now it's your turn. What do you think about these smart animals? Let me know down below and also share with me some interesting things you learned in today's class. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For science and art class today, we are doing part four of the musical instrument series. And in today's class, we are learning about the drum. Let's go! Bang, bang, rat -tat. Drums are a fun instrument to play. It's time to play the drums. Drums can be shaped like many things. A drum can look like a tube or a barrel. A drum can even look like a goblet, like this. Some drums are big and some are small. They can be made out of many things. Drums can be made out of metal, wood or plastic. There are many kinds of drums. Two kinds are a snare drum and a bass drum. These are both in a drum set. Drums have been around for many years. Long ago, people sent messages with drums. Sometimes armies use drums to help soldiers. Today, most people use drums to make music. People all over the world play the drum. And drum playing is very important in many places, like in Africa. People play drums to make a beat. Drum beats help other instruments play together. Beats can be fast or slow. Some drums like these make musical sounds. The sounds can be loud or soft, and the notes can be low or high. You can hit drums with drumsticks or with your hands. Some people use their feet to make sounds too. Bang, bang, ratatat. Playing the drums is so much fun. Now let's go through the four new words that we learned in today's book. The first word is bass drum, which is a drum that makes deep sound. A bass drum is in a drum set. Beat is a regular rhythm of music. A drum plays a beat. Goblet is a drinking glass that has a stem and a cup. A drum can be shaped like a goblet. And finally, notes are musical sounds. The timpani drum can play notes. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the drums? Let me know down below. And also, share with me some interesting things you've learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For English class today, we are reading The King's New Clothes. Don't forget to stay to the end of the story where we have some questions to test your understanding. Are you ready? Let's go! King Croc loved clothes. He always had new clothes for every day of the week. But King Croc was not sure who he could trust. One day, two tailors came to visit the king. We can create a magic robe that will save your kingdom, they said. What kind of robe can save my kingdom, said King Croc. The people you can trust will see a beautiful robe, said one tailor. What will the other people see, asked King Croc. They will see a big black and white skunk, said the other tailor. King Croc liked the idea. If someone held their nose or ran when they saw his magic robe, he would know that they could not be trusted. The king hired the tailors. Then he invited the entire kingdom to attend a special party. A few days before the party, King Croc went to see his magic robe. See how beautiful it is, said one tailor as he held up the robe. It shimmers with rainbow colors, said the other tailor proudly. King Croc saw a furry black cape with white stripes. Oh dear, he thought. It looks like a big skunk. Can I not trust my own eyes? 
It is the most beautiful robe I have ever seen, King Croak said as the tailors wrapped the robe over his shoulders. Magnificent, cried the tailors. The king's attendants agreed. They did not want their king to think that they could not be trusted. On the day of the party, King Croc entered the grand jungle wearing his magic robe. The party guests all stared. Then one held her nose, then another, then another. Soon everyone ran away, including the king's attendants. Is there no one in my kingdom I can trust? cried King Croc. He sat on his throne and sighed. I won't run away, said a wee voice. Oh, hello, said King Croc. From then on, the skunk and King Croc became trusting friends and lived happily ever after. Now, I will ask you three questions to test how well you understand the story. Are you ready? Question 1. Which two animals made the magic robe for the king? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is two mice. Very good. Now, question two. Do you remember the animals that was the king's attendants? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The king's attendants were both pink flamingos. Very good. Now, final question. Question three. Why did all the animals run away when the king showed up with his magical robe? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. Because he was wearing a skunk robe and everyone thought he was a smelly skunk. Very good. Now it's your turn. What do you think about this story, the king's new clothes? Let me know down below. And also, share with me an important lesson that you learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.